but yeah what do you think about demand like like this year compared to the next couple of years yeah i think anyone who says it's not going to be sustainable it, i mean it's it's rhetoric it, it, it it's noise as far as i'm concerned we can look at the facts first of all right. geologically silver is found in in geological terms in a form called epithermal meaning very near the surface so the big deposits were found decades ago that's yeah. first and foremost for 5000 years the mining ratio gold to silver silver to gold was 15.5 or 16 to 1 16 ounces of silver for every 1 ounce of gold now it's 7 to 1 so right. in 5000 years that number has over halved to 7 to 1 yes and when you look at the 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 reality that of all the silver coming to industry, only 35% of it comes from companies that specifically mine silver. So right. in a Buy billion product. ounces, right, 350 million ounces come from mining companies like First Majestic and Endeavor. The rest comes from byproduct mining of other material, of other uh, metals. And, and so the supply chain not only is depleting, but it's also very small when you talk about the, the concentration of companies that are specifically looking for silver and because of its geological footprint, you know, you have to literally dig deeper and explore further because the big deposits, were, which were found in an epithermal fashion real near the surface, have been exploited long, long, long ago. Now, when you talk about um, the, the demand, meaning a dwindling supply, yes, you have an expansion in green and digital applications. and which is true. You have the electric vehicles, you have the solar panels, you have all of the applications that silver needs or that needs silver in a digital and electronic and green world, iPads, iPhones, flat screen computers, anything that conducts electricity by and large has uses silver or copper, which is also becoming harder and harder and harder to source. Copper is, is running into the same problems or will run into the same problems that we're seeing in all of these commodities. And they're all being accumulated by China because to them, it's the same thing as wealth. But let's get to the point. So we have in nature a depleting footprint in, in geologic terms. And we have an a increase in demand um, globally, not just from a monetary perspective, but also from an industrial perspective. And then you take a look at the top on down. When you look at the LME, the London Metals Exchange, has the lowest number of ounces of silver since they've started keeping records in their warehouse, where if the number of ounces that have been delivered off the London Metals Exchange over the next several months continue at this pace by mid-2023, they will have nothing. Now, I don't think they'll let it get that far, but that's how fast it's being depleted. When you look at the COMEX market, yet again last week, um, only 294.4 million ounces in the entire COMEX ecosystem, of which somewhere in the neighborhood of 34 or 5 million are in the registered category. 3.7 million ounces were delivered off last week. This is yet another three-year low. So we're seeing a constant depletion from the top on down, from the LME, from the COMEX. We're seeing the, the authorized participants drain the uh, ETFs like SLV. Uh, so we're seeing from the very, very top, from the ground, from the COMEX, from the LME, from the ETFs, they're all being bled dry and price is being used to misdirect everything, yep. including the author who wrote that article. It's true. Whoever wrote that article literally is not paying attention and they're being misdirected. Where. Um, the, the perception of reality is doctored. It is, it, is, it is maintained by price suppression and rhetoric. And people like that saying that filters its way through the ecosystem where a financial advisor or a hedge fund uh, trader may say, yeah, you know, it's probably done. It's probably, not. there'll be more silver. Now, let's look elsewhere. Right. So this rhetoric has an effect. The suppression of prices have an effect. And like I've said on your show before, if price was truly a reflection of demand then who the hell and why <laughs> the hell is the biggest money in the world draining these exchanges yeah. why is india importing 300 million ounces <laughs> of silver why are these countries doing this why are these big traders doing this or these sovereign wealth funds or these family offices why are they taking metal off of the exchange and remember 
when you pull Comex bars off the Comex market, you are diminishing your liquidity tremendously. In order to get them back into Comex, you have to be reintroduced and assayed. Doesn't work so well if you're in a hurry to get liquidity. So when these are being pulled off the exchange and going somewhere, it's a one-way ticket. Mm. So when you talk about misdirection, when you talk about a bullish setup for the price of gold and silver, it's extraordinary. And um, I think that that this is just the very, very beginning right now yeah. where people are really globally starting to wake up to yeah. um, to what's going on. And uh, I, I really honestly don't think that we've begun to see anything yet in terms yeah. of what real supply shortages look like. Yeah, because that's because the people in the mainstream are, are completely clueless as to what precious metals represent. The people who you and I talk to represent but one half of one percent of the entire financial matrix right. in this country. So move it up to five percent, that's a tenfold increase in demand and like that it's over. Yeah. Yeah. Um I I I always love when people say, you know, there's no silver shortage. I can go still buy it online perfectly fine. It's like that's that's not how it works, you know. That's not how it works. That's not the reality. And, and we are just starting. And if you want to, if you want an idea, look at premiums. I mean, there's no premiums on gold because gold isn't really that scarce. Uh, um, and and I like how um, you always talk about that misdirect. What, what's that saying? You say like price is the price greatest. is a tool of misdirection. Yeah, and that's what it is because you can suppress yeah. the price and it, and it, what it does. Most people never look under the hood. Yeah, it's like yeah. a really pretty paint job, and underneath there's a squirrel running on a wheel chasing <laughs> a nut. You know, trying to get yeah. the car to move. Well, that's kind of what it is here, where the price is misdirecting everyone into believing that gold and silver are not a place to be. Yet the biggest yeah. money in the world is draining the the, the supply. It's yeah. very, it's counter to to the argument, and it's counter to the price. So. Um, look, not only that, we're seeing more and more and more countries moving away from the dollar and the places that they will go will be to gold and silver. Let me let me make the point here. So we talk about all of these countries that want to join um, the BRICS nations. I'm going to rattle off a bunch of countries and I'm going to read a very interesting statistic so you can understand what I mean is these will be the ones that it. The Russian foreign minister just announced that over a dozen new countries are joining BRICS. He's talking about Algeria, Argentina, Iran, United Arab Emirates, Nicaragua, Turkey, Indonesia, Senegal, Afghanistan, Egypt, Kazakhstan, and Saudi Arabia. And so those countries have expressed and or already applied for BRICS. And I want you to remember some of those names. And let me talk, the article talks about BRICS Plus. And I'm going to read some of the countries that are in this BRICS Plus ecosystem who are now being targeted and invited to join. You have Argentina in Latin America, you have Nicaragua in Central America, you have Algeria, Egypt, Iran, we talked about Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Nigeria and South and Senegal in South Africa. You have Afghanistan, Kazakhstan in Russia. Uh, in Central Asia, you have India, Indonesia and Thailand in Southeast Asia. Um, you, you know, you have these countries that are all joining together uh, and all of them are massively accumulating commodities. When they talk about next on the list, uh, the countries that they want to invite next, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Panama, Bolivia, Chile, Cuba, Ecuador, Peru, Uruguay, Venezuela, Azerbaijan, Mongolia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Turkmenia, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Vietnam. All of those countries are going to be invited or have expressed interest. Now, here's the interesting thing. This is gold holdings as a percentage of reserves. Venezuela, 82%. Uzbekistan, 65%. Kazakhstan, 63%. Bolivia, 55%. Belarus, 40 Turkey, 29 Pakistan, 29 These are all the countries that want to join or are being invited or have expressed interest. What are they doing with their money? They are stock piling commodities and in particular gold. So when you see the price of gold and silver not reacting the way we really think it should, yet these countries massively accumulating it and this drive away from the dollar, it's all being suppressed on COMEX and on the London Metals Exchange and being delivered to these countries who are going to use it to provide an equal footing at the table on the new BRICS currency system, which 
by these standards will equate to the majority of human population when the switch is flipped. And I really do believe that this is why you are going to see ultimately to the people who say you can still buy it, fine. It's never been so hard to get, but just wait. Just wait until it becomes quite obvious that the only way that you have a seat at the table is to accumulate all these precious metals. So if you are one of these countries, you have a vested interest in accumulating it as fast as you can, but not letting the price rise too fast. And they are all using suppression of the paper markets to accumulate the hell out of the physicals and give themselves equal footing at a table where you will be um, uh, listened to by the amount of what you're bringing to the table. Instead of, like in the United Nations, one country having more weight over another, like the United States, these countries will all use commodities to peg uh, their place at the table so that everyone has equal footing in what will be a massive coalition against the Western hegemony. And you can see it, it's all centering around gold and silver and other commodities it's just the beginning man it yeah. is just the beginning so to those people out there who say you can still get it great we can still sell it to you too but i will tell you as god is my witness if i had a gun to my head and said what will put you out of business before anything else it would be the inability to source product it would be the only thing that i could think of long before the government say gold and silver are illegal you won't be able to find it in this country we're not there yet but all it would take would be for some sort of really big market crash where people wake up and say, my God, I need to protect myself. And if 2% of the people in this country move to put money into precious metals, it's over like that. Yeah. It's over. So yeah, it's, it's just beginning that I can tell you.